So the last number of weeks, if you have uh, not been with us, uh, we've been looking at different passages in the Bible with the specific look at some of the encounters that Jesus had with different individuals. And we have been looking at these encounters with the hope that as we begin to see the story untold and retold again, that, that we begin to start to see ourselves in the story as well. Begin to start to understand that in the same way that, that Jesus encountered these different individuals at a different place at a different time, the principle remains the same. And that is Jesus wants to encounter us in the midst of all of life. And oftentimes, as we see, not only through the story and the pages of the Bible, but perhaps we've experienced in our own lives as well, it, it comes in those unexpected moments. It comes perhaps as an interruption. It, it comes in a place where we may not have been expecting it at all. But the same truth remains. And that is, God desires to show up in our life. God desires to be a part of our life. So that God is not simply uh, the person we, we talk about, but, but rather the one we live all of life with. And so my hope this morning is the same hope that I bring every Sunday morning, is that as we begin to open the pages of the Bible, that this begins to impact us and begins to provide for us the opportunity to ask this one question. What is my next step? I think that's an important question for us always to consider. Regardless of where you are in life, regardless of of where even you may be in terms of the spectrum of faith, whether, whether you are someone who has been a Christian, you've been a follower of Jesus for a very long time, whether you're someone who this is still relatively new to you, or maybe you're someone here this morning that is not even there yet. You you are still exploring. You are are still checking out not only who this Jesus is, but, but what it means for you in life. I hope regardless of where you are, you ask the same question. What is my next step? Because we've been talking and we continue to speak about Jesus meets us wherever we are at. But the hope is that we will not remain there. And so this morning, we're going to look at another passage. We just read it uh, from John's Gospel. The story of two men, Philip and Nathaniel, who experienced and encountered Jesus one day. Now, if we jump further into their story, we, we start to realize that Philip and Nathaniel became part of Jesus' 12 disciples. Uh, If you're familiar with Jesus and and his ministry, he gathered around 12 specific individuals who would be with him, who he would mentor and who he would teach, and who spent more time with Jesus than anyone else, with the understanding that following Jesus' death and resurrection, these would be the individuals who would begin the movement of Christianity. I think one of the dangers, one of the, one of the challenges we come across whenever we, we think of the history of the church or we even read some of these stories in the Bible is, is we jump to the end and, and we see the impact of these men and, and these women and we think, well, that, 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 that could never be me. But what we fail to understand and recognize is that it started somewhere in a place where Jesus encountered them. And it was in that first meeting, in that first encounter, like we know in any relationship, it begins to grow and begins to build and begins to develop into something even far greater. And that's why when we we speak about faith in Jesus, we, we always speak about that importance and that reality of a relationship that that starts in a new beginning but that God's desire is that it would continue to grow and flourish and impact our lives in every circumstance and situation. And so I want to go back to this story. If you have a Bible and you want to kind of follow along, I welcome you to do that. Um, I'm going to kind of pull out some, some different things for us to learn, but then always come back to the question of what is my next step? What does this mean for me here on this day? as I go forward. And so it begins as a rather um, casual encounter. We're told that 
that Jesus approaches and meets Philip. Now, we need to understand that when we read the Bible and, and we see the things that are being taught, not all of the details are included. Actually, John helps us out with that. At the very end of his book, he goes on to say, listen, if, if everything was recorded that Jesus did and that Jesus said, there would not be enough books in the world to contain it. And so we, we need to understand that, that sometimes one of the challenges and, and perhaps the frustrations when we read the Bible is, is we see things kind of moving along fairly quickly and we'll ask the question, okay, okay, what are some other details? Because in this encounter, Jesus comes up to Philip and he says, follow me. And immediately, Philip believes. I think that's interesting terminology, interesting language that, that Jesus uses when, when it comes to what is it that God wants from us? Imagine for a moment that you were walking down the street and, and you were heading in a certain direction and, and you were going to do something and you're going to go over there. And then suddenly you saw me walking down the street and I kind of shouted out to you, hey, 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 come and follow me. You would need to make a decision, right? You need to make a decision of, okay, first of all, do I really want to follow Joel? Is where he going any better than where I'm going? And then based upon that decision, you would decide, okay, I'm going to stop going in the direction I was, and I'm now going to go and follow where Joel is going to lead me. I think that's such an amazing image when we think of these words that Jesus so often uses and continues to use in our lives of when he says, follow me. He's asking us, will you make a commitment? Will you make a decision to stop going in the direction you were going and choose to follow in my direction. Choose to trust in me. Choose to believe in me. So that your life begins to revolve around him. Now how did Philip make that decision? Clearly there's more to the story. You see, Philip was a Jew. And for the Jews, they were holding to this belief, this, this hope, this, this confident assurance that God was not finished in their story yet. That there was this hope of this coming Messiah, the one that would not only save God's people, but the one who would lead God's people. And they had been holding on to these promises, these promises, these prophecies that had been spoken about for hundreds and hundreds of years. That what we refer to as the Old Testament. They, they refer to it as the, the Hebrew Bible. And so they're, they're holding on to these promises and these prophecies of this coming Messiah, the, the one who would truly lead God's people, the, the Messiah of the world. And so Philip would have held to and, hold and would have understood these promises and these prophecies. And so suddenly when, when he then encountered Jesus, clearly there was an understanding that the one standing before him, Jesus, you know, Joseph's son, the, the guy from Nazareth, he was the Messiah. And so suddenly everything that Philip and others would have been waiting for was being fulfilled in Jesus. And so it kind of made it easier for Philip to say, listen, I may have been heading down this path, but yes, now I'm going to follow you. But the story doesn't end there, does it? We're told the very next thing that Philip does is, is rather interesting. He goes and finds what I think would be a buddy, a guy by the name of Nathaniel. And he goes to Nathaniel, and there's, and there's a sense of excitement. There's, there's, there's a sense of joy. There's a there's sense of, oh, I've got something i got to tell you, and, and, and I just can't wait to tell you. Have you ever been in that situation where you've heard some good news, and, and you just want to share that good news with someone else, and, and you just can't wait to get it out? Well, I, I think that would have been the, the, the attitude and the atmosphere around Philip. He, he, he runs up to Nathaniel, and he says, hey, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, great news, great news. You know, you know the one we've been reading about? You know, in the scriptures, Moses talked about him, the other prophets talked about him. You know the Messiah, the, the one we've been waiting for? I have met him. He is here. It's, it's Jesus, Joseph's son, the guy from Nazareth. Now, I want to just pause here for a moment because I think it opens up an interesting conversation for all of us. 
particularly for those who have put their faith in Jesus, particularly for, for those of us who have made that decision, like Philip, to follow him, it's this understanding that faith is personal, that no one can make that decision for us, but it was never intended to be private. Notice, notice Philip didn't say, wow, I have met the Messiah. I have this incredible good news. I'm just not going to tell anyone else about it. I'm just going to go and hang out with Jesus. I'm going to go do my Jesus things, and I'm not going to share or talk about it. Yet so often, isn't that the approach we take in our own lives? We we come to this place, we, we live in a culture that says, listen, you, you can believe whatever you want to believe, just keep it to yourself. But is that what Jesus wants for us? Is that what Jesus desires for us in our lives? After Jesus died and then rose again, he spent time with his followers again, and before he ascended into heaven, he basically handed over the keys to the kingdom and said, listen, you guys are now going to be my witnesses. You now are going to be making disciples. You are going to be telling others everything that I have told you. It's this, it's this action word of go, yet, yet so often, I think, in our own lives, we, we don't want to go. We, we, we want to play it safe. And then the argument is there, right? We, we don't want to be offensive. Uh, we don't want to find ourselves in some of those awkward conversations. Sometimes we're not even sure how to kind of bring it up, and so we choose just not to say anything. But if you start to realize the incredible difference that God makes in your life, surely it's something we want to share with others. And I think oftentimes the challenge that I know that I face, and perhaps you feel the tension as well, is not in the not wanting to share, but, but how do I have these conversations so that they're not awkward, they're, they're not offensive, but that it's an actual dialogue where I can talk about my faith and my reality. Well, I'm so glad we have stories like Philip because I think he paints an incredible picture, some, some, some great truths that we can pull out to help us understand. Because notice what Philip did. He went to a guy he already knew named Nathaniel. Uh, some scholars think that they're either friends or perhaps they, they, were, they worked together, uh, likely fishermen. Um, and so he went and he found Nathaniel, someone he already had a relationship with. And he was able to share some wonderful news. I think the same is true for all of us. That, that, that when Jesus says, you know, go and, and share the good news, go and be my witnesses, it, it's not necessarily go out onto the street corners, go and get on a soapbox, but, but rather, are there people in your lives, relationships you've, you've already created, that, that you can begin to just have these conversations with? Because that's precisely what Philip did with Nathaniel. And for Philip, it didn't go very smoothly. Right? It's not like Philip showed up and says, I have this great news. Nathaniel, we found the Messiah. We found the one that, that Moses has been talking about. And Nathaniel's like, this is fantastic. This is wonderful. No, he got sarcastic. He's like, really? Really? Philip, wake up, buddy. Jesus? Jesus of Nazareth? Now, I don't know if you've ever been in Nazareth. I have not, but I have been told it's kind of in the backwoods, right? Before Jesus showed up, Nazareth was like nowhereville. And so Nathaniel is like sitting there thinking, really? You're telling me the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is coming from the backwoods of Nazareth. No, no I, I don't believe you, Philip, because even if you look at the scriptures, it's talking about Bethlehem. It's talking about other places. Really? Nazareth? And, and then, he just, then he just adds it. He just kind of like sticks it a little bit further. He's like, does anything good come from Nazareth? You know the irony in all of this? Is that Nathaniel came from a small town called Cana, which is about four miles north of Nazareth. And so if Nazareth was a nowheresville, Cana was its stepsister to nowhere as well, right? There was nothing really happening there either. Like, it would be the equivalent of, of someone, let me think of four, four miles north of Paris, someone from Air being like, really? I met this really cool guy from Paris. Paris? Really? Can anything good come from Paris? 
They'd be like, what's wrong with you? You just live in air. You can't be that much better than us, can you? That would be the equivalent. And I think it's an interesting place to land. Because what we start to notice is that Nathaniel wasn't ready to, to jump up and down. He had questions, he had doubts, and he had uncertainties. He even had a bit of prejudice. And I think it's good for us to know that. Because perhaps there are some people here this morning that, that are not there yet. Perhaps you're, you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know what? I hear this talk about Jesus, but I have questions, I have doubts, I have uncertainties. And that's okay. I think oftentimes that's where the conversation can begin. Because notice what Philip does next. And maybe you found yourself in this circumstance where you've maybe invited someone to church or, or you've wanted to share your faith and, and, and you get a different version of what Nathaniel says, but they're like, really? You want me to go to church? Kind of judgmental, hypocritical. I, 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 I'm not interested. And notice what Philip does. He, he doesn't just kind of walk away and say, yeah, you know what, you're, you're, you're right. You know, I, I don't, you're right, I guess. Nor does he get confrontational. He doesn't kind of get up in Nathaniel's grill and start saying, hey, 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 what are you talking about? And get all aggressive. No, he offers an invitation. And he simply says, come and see. Come and check it out on your own. Don't, don't draw your conclusions too quickly. And, and I know in my own life, this, this has been so helpful that, that when other people raise questions or, or other people are not quite sure, and they ask me questions that, that I don't even know the answer to, I, I, I just simply say, you know what, I don't know. What, why don't you come and see? Why don't you come and check it out? Clearly, there must have been a bit of a relationship between Philip and Nathaniel, because Nathaniel chooses to go. And then he comes, and then as he is approaching Jesus, Jesus calls out to him and says something amazing. He says, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. I don't know, but I kind of think that Jesus was referencing Nathaniel's earlier conversation with Philip. Because essentially what Jesus is saying is, hey, here is an authentic guy. Here is someone who is just a straight shooter. He says whatever is on his mind, right? And that's exactly what Nathaniel did to Philip. He's like, I don't want to go see this Jesus, Joseph's son. He comes from Nazareth. He surely can't be the Messiah. At least he was upfront about it. And I think it gives us great insight into the fact that what Jesus wants from us is not the polished version that we try to show everyone else. But authenticity, which again tells me that it's okay to have doubts. It's okay to have questions. It's okay to sometimes question what God is doing because that speaks to authenticity as opposed to just simply trying to pretend we're something else. Nathaniel didn't pretend he was anything else. He was straight up in terms of everything that he did. And that's how Jesus addressed him. Well, now Nathaniel is intrigued. I mean, honestly, if anyone gives you a compliment, you're going to probably engage them a little bit more, right? And so Nathaniel's like, how, how do you know me? How do you know me? And Jesus says, I saw you sitting under the fig tree even before Philip came and spoke to you. That's again some incredible insight, I think, for us. For those of us that perhaps are, 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 are shy in terms of sharing our faith, at times we may think that we have to own everything ourselves. Do you notice what Jesus said? He says, I saw Nathaniel even before Philip went and talked, which tells me that God is at work in people's lives even before we get the gumption to say anything to them. That, that, that God is working in people's lives. It also speaks to the reality that, that God knows us personally. It's not some, some distant belief in God and, and, and God doesn't know us and understand us. I mean, there's, there's other passages that just go into to detail about this. Some of the greatest psalms in the Bible, are these prayers are, are just about how God knows us. 
and desires that we know him even more. And again, I have to believe that there was much further conversation between Jesus and Nathaniel. But then Nathaniel comes to a place of saying, like Philip, I'm going to follow you. And then Jesus gives him these words of encouragement. He's like, basically, you ain't seen nothing yet. You're going to see such incredible things. Such incredible things. You see, I appreciate this story so much. Because it's so easy to go to the end and to, to think of all the difference and the impact that, that Nathaniel and Philip had in terms of the building of the kingdom of God. But it's so refreshing to see of how they first encountered Jesus. Of how they were willing to choose to follow him. To, to stop going in whatever direction they were going and to choose to go in the direction of Jesus. And that's essentially the invitation that Jesus gives to all of us of saying, will you direct, will you orient your life around me? Will you come and follow me? You see, I believe that Jesus wants us to share our faith, not simply because of the impact it can make on others, but because of the impact it makes upon our faith as well. Last weekend, I had the opportunity to go back to Halifax and have a reunion with a bunch of guys who I played basketball with uh, 20 years ago. Um, it was basically the basketball version of good fishing stories, right? We were much better back then. The stories got better. I mean, my, my, my game has just grown immensely. It was a great time to kind of hang out and, and to chat and perhaps exaggerate a little bit. But it was also an opportunity to talk about what was going on in life. And over the course of the weekend, over, over dinner or in between games, uh, walking from one place to the next, I found myself in conversations with these guys and having the opportunity to share my faith more with them. And I'll be honest, I, I, don't, I don't know what impact it had upon them, but what I did start to notice was the impact it had on me in simply sharing it. And I think that's so often the things that we are missing out on, that, that when we fail to share our faith, that, that we're not allowing that experience of the Holy Spirit to be at work in us and ultimately through us as well. So we'll end with this question. Where are you in the story? And to tack one on, what is your next step? Maybe you can relate a little bit to Nathaniel. You're, you're not there yet. You're not sure. You, you have questions. You, you have doubts. You, you're a little skeptical. Would you be willing to be like Nathaniel and at least continue to take steps closer? Maybe it's as simple as just continuing to join us on a Sunday morning. Grabbing a Bible if you don't already have one. We have numerous Bibles at the welcome table to take it and just start reading through the book of John to, to see and to hear more of who Jesus is and also what he desires for you in your life. To understand that it's okay to have questions, to be uncertain about things. Jesus will meet you there. Or maybe you're kind of like Philip. That's, that's where I find myself in the story of having received this good news of Jesus and then trying to work my way through how do I share it with others. Perhaps you can take that step. Someone you know already. Easter is coming, and that's why we, we talk about some of these initiatives of egg your neighbor, trying to take the edge off a little bit, trying to create more natural conversations. And so maybe it's as simple as just taking one of these bags, thinking through who, who can I engage with in the next couple of weeks, with the opportunity to simply invite them to come and see. That's all Jesus is asking us to do, understanding that we leave the results up to God. You never know what will happen in their life, but I guarantee you this, when we take these steps of faith, you will experience more of the goodness of God in your life. And so what's your next step? 
What can you do in this coming week to take a step closer in following Jesus in all that we do? Let us pray together.